All right. Thanks very much, Lisa Stark. I appreciate it. I just got word here that uh, the president is expected to make a statement again this morning after a 10.45 a.m. meeting that he's having. So we'll be waiting for a presidential statement. But I want to go to Brian Rooney, who's at Los Angeles International Airport, which, of course, was the destination of three of those flights. Good morning, Diane. Uh, there's been talk about flights resuming at 9 a.m. this morning. And if you can see behind me, it's just first light here in Los Angeles. This airport is very quiet. Uh, there has not been the sound of a jet here for hours. There was one plane that took off overnight. Uh, it might have been some sort of cargo shipment. We're not sure. This does not have the look of an airport that is thinking about going back into business in a few hours. There's been no movement among the airplanes. Airplanes are scattered all over the country, Diane. There are hundreds of them that are at the wrong airport that need to be repositioned in order to start uh, picking up passengers. It doesn't look like that's going to happen. Overnight, we have begun to hear the identity of some of the people who were on those airplanes that were bound for Los Angeles. Uh, some of them are familiar names here in Los Angeles in the entertainment industry. A man named David Angel and his wife, Lynn Angel. He was a producer of the sitcom Frasier uh, and had also been a comedy writer before that, uh, had written episodes of Cheers, somebody very well known in the entertainment industry here in Los Angeles. Uh, Barry Berenson, an actress who's 53 years old, she was the widow of the late actor Tony Perkins of Psycho fame. Uh, she was on one of the aircraft that crashed. A couple of scouts for the Los Angeles Kings hockey team, uh, Ace Bailey and Mark Bavis, uh, had come to Los Angeles, were on their way to Los Angeles. They were going to begin their fall training camp uh, with the Los Angeles Kings. It's just interesting as you go, you hear the names, Something like this just kind of takes a slice out of America. A couple of promising young businessmen here. Edmund Glazer was a chief financial officer of a technology company called MRV Communications. Just about a week ago, he was on camera. Uh, I believe he rang the opening bell at the New York Stock Exchange, or the, uh, I believe it was the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, Daniel Lewin, co-founder of a technology company called uh, Akamai Technology, an internet company. Uh, and it goes on like that, Peter Gay, a vice president of the Raytheon Corporation. These are names that have come to us uh, not through the airlines, uh, but through families and their companies who have confirmed that they were on these airplanes. All right, Brian, Diane. thanks very much. Indeed, we had a chance to talk to Peter Gay's family uh, in Boston, uh, his father and his two brothers uh, talking very eloquently about him. Uh, George uh, Stephanopoulos with us. You've got the congressional schedule for today? Yeah, basically, this morning, we've already reported that President Bush is meeting with the joint congressional leadership at 1130. That's the top leaders of the Congress. Following that, they're going to clear the House chambers and have an intelligence briefing for all the members of the House and the Senate in the House chamber at midday. Then both the House and the Senate are expected to pass a joint resolution condemning uh, the act and, and authorizing, although not in any formal way, a response. And finally, they're trying to organize a prayer vigil for this evening as well. We all remember last night all the members of Congress tried to gather and sing God Bless America. Tonight they want to do a prayer vigil and now they're also just beginning to talk about how they're going to deal with the aftermath of all this and they're talking about supplemental appropriations bills, spending bills to help repair New York and, and the other affected areas and they're saying it could be in the billions, even tens of billions. Yes and as we mentioned the president has also already declared New York a, a city to be a federal disaster area which uh, opens up the city for uh, many kinds of, of aid. Want to go to ABC's Claire Shipman down in Washington with some other details, Claire? Uh, good morning, Charlie. Well, that's right. You heard George say the president's going to be meeting with congressional leaders a little bit later. Right now, he's meeting with his national security team, a full-scale principals meeting, as it's called. At the end of that meeting, at 1045, he's going to bring the White House pool in to answer some questions. We've been told that he is very eager to answer a number of questions. We're also told one of the issues he's going to be studying today when we're not seeing him publicly is how to get things back to normal, especially getting air traffic back to normal, opening up the airports. And as one security official said to me, we're already starting to be in the first stage of second guessing in terms of airport security and how all of this could have happened. Charlie? All right, all right thanks, Claire. And a number of new restrictions that we've already heard of uh, from the Transportation Secretary, Norm Mineta, uh, including no curbside uh, check-ins, uh, only passengers will be allowed through security gates and uh, new rules. I doubt they'll be allowing four-inch blades any longer through uh, security checkpoints, uh, given what's happened with the box cutters and the knives that these uh, men were able to bring on board. 
And we want to turn now because we're joined by former governor of New York, Mario Cuomo, and grateful to have you come in, Governor Cuomo. Mm -hmm. I think, first of all, that having been governor of this state, that you would have heard lots of scenarios like this, that you would have that, that you would have heard perhaps even threats about things like this. Did it come as much of a surprise to you as it did to the rest of us? Yeah, the dimensions of it certainly uh, stunned me as they did uh, uh, most people. But uh, I must tell you, 1993, it was essentially the same presumed group that was involved in acts of terrorism, and I say presumed very carefully. Uh, they attacked the same place, the World Trade Center, because it was the symbol of the United States, perhaps the most recognizable symbol outside of the Statue of Liberty. Uh, in 1993, following that, we made all the same pledges of America will never be the same. This is the first time this kind of thing has happened. We'll be more cautious in the future. We will be uh, more alert to terrorism. We were aware of terrorism. It appears to me that we may have been victimized by our own resilience. I remember the day after the bombing saying, I will be back in my office because then the governor had an office on the 57th floor within two or three months. And two or three months later, I returned with all the other tenants. And America went back to its norm. And all of a sudden, the pressure was off. We weren't concerned anymore about terrorists bringing us down because we had overcome it with relative ease. We were back in business, back to normal.